Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Prime Minister launches Children's Carnival in Pinal. Presidential nominee Justice Anthony Carmona continues to get thumbs up from the Prime Minister. And the Minister of Local Government says the Ministry is now performing at an admirable level. In our top story, Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Visasa attended the 16th annual Children's Carnival Parade in a Saparia constituency. The visit was part of many activities as she interacted with the children and also unveiled a surprise to the area. The constituency of Pinal Debe came alive with colour as Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa launched Children's Carnival 2013 at Bupsing Park, Pinal. The 16th running year of the event saw over eight schools from the district participate in the parade. The annual procession is organised by the Separia Women's Association and saw the little tykes adorned in their colourful costumes parade through the streets of Debe. Soka Arti Show in Winchester entertained the masses of the little people so much to their delight that they overtook him on the stage. Patron of the event, Prime Minister Prasad Bisesa, was present for the judging aspect of the day's proceedings and expressed pleasure in seeing the level of participation among the children. She says this was an indication that culture was in good hands and urged them to have a safe carnival. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister unveiled the long-awaited dial in the area bearing the Penal Debe Regional Corporation logo situated on a busy Penal Junction. Located in the bustling commerce area of the district, the clock will serve as part of its insignia, adding character to the southern town. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Meanwhile, Prime Minister, the Honourable Kamala Prasad Bisesa says the nomination of Justice Anthony Carmona to the presidential post has received the all clear with regards to him meeting constitutional requirements. She made the comment during a visit to the Penal Debe in a Saparia constituency. President nominee Justice Anthony Carmona continues to get a thumbs up from Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa as she describes him as the best candidate for the job. Her reiteration of this comes on the heels of legal heads who gave the nod of approval after reviewing his qualifications. Speaking to reporters during her visit to the district of Pinal Debe, located in her Siparia constituency, Prime Minister Prasad Bisesa confirmed Justice Carmona's qualifications, meeting the requirements as outlined by Section 23 of the Constitution, which guides the nomination process. Our society is one of the most diverse, multi, multicultural, multi-ethnic, uh, in every way, a very poor, diverse society. And therefore, there should not be one factor that is an overriding factor. All must be considered um, to come up with the best person. And I do believe that in the process, we will be able to select the best candidate uh, for our nominee as president of the republic. The operating words are ordinarily resident. So there, there is a law, there is a difference, and this is the advice that we have received. The government is satisfied based on the advice received, but he is eminently qualified and does meet the requirements of Section 22. She adds that his nomination received an overwhelming approval and expressed her confidence in him representing the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Indeed, uh, yesterday I had discussions with uh, the Chief Whip, Ms. Marley McDonald, who in turn was speaking on her own behalf and on that of Dr. Rowley, who asked us a clear, clearly and clarified issue. We did respond to them as well, and quite frankly, I don't see any hiccups. Uh, there has been a groundswell of uh, support uh, and acclamation for the choice of one for Justice Kimona, who clearly is a distinguished son of our soil in every sense of the word, a family person, grounded in religious and spiritual, spiritual uh, values. Um, of course, in terms of result, that may be an advantage or a disadvantage, but in every respect, he, 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 in my respect to you, presents uh, a true son of Trinidad and someone together with himself and his family who could represent any one of us uh, in Trinidad to be. And with regards to the selection process in nominating a candidate, Prime Minister Prasad Bisesa described it as an interesting one 
that demonstrated a level of interest and respect the nation holds for the presidency. It was a very challenging and interesting process because so many names were put forward, persons who were all very distinguished persons, and so um, in, in that sense it was challenging but most interesting to see the amount of persons who could have served and also to see the great interest amongst the citizens in the choice of a president and definitely pinpointing and underscoring the importance of the role of the president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So, not tedious, sir, but most interesting. On Monday, the Prime Minister revealed the selection of Justice Kamuna for the position. His professional standing is one that is ranked highly, not only in the regional legal world, but in the international realm as well. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. After the break, the Ministry of Local Government awards its employees with excellence and service. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Ministry of Local Government has hosted its Excellence in Service Awards ceremony for its employees. The awards were given to employees with outstanding performance at all levels of the ministry, from councillors to regional cooperation employees and ministry staff. These are the first such awards at the ministry. Delivering the feature address, Minister of Local Government, Dr. The Honourable Suraj Ratan Rambachan says, the ministry is now performing at an admirable level. He says from his observations, the ministry seems to be on a positive trend. However, he reminds employees that this level of service must be emulated at all levels of the ministry. It is a ministry of local government and regional corporations that on a growth part rather than a part of a slow organizing debt. I have seen a tremendous paradigm shift in terms of how local government corporations have begun to function. And I sincerely hope that the, what I'm seeing in terms of this high level performance on the part of the staff of the regional corporations and the ministry is really being emulated at the level of the councillors and all the men of the corporations. He reminds the employees that they are in a position to affect people's daily lives an opportunity that will affect their reputation. Our mark in life as a ministry, as corporations, as individuals, our reputation, it will be substantially determined by the work ethic we portray and how that work ethic impacts on the lives of others. This work, of course, is in every aspect of national life and also one may see in our home, in our neighborhoods, and your workplaces. The local government minister also impresses upon employees the importance of doing their work to the best of their ability. What we do in our time now, whether as local government representative, as a public servant, will determine whether this country will fulfill its potential to become a developed country where people want to live, work, conduct business and visit. To accomplish this, all of us at our respective workplaces and by this I mean the corporations and the Ministry of Local Government have major roles to play. Dr. Rambachan says the ministry is in a dynamic position which allows it to impact on nearly every sector in this country. He tells all local government employees to never underestimate the magnitude of their roles. The fact that a number of projects are undertaken by small and medium-sized contractors, many of them from the locality, means that apart from promoting local entrepreneurship, Opportunities are provided and created for income generation and employment creation, thereby stimulating the local economies and set in train a host of other activities in other sectors such as services, entertainment, agriculture, manufacturing, banking, etc. Gregory McBurney, News 4. The formation of Planning and Sustainable Development Ministry was done based on the sole aspect of improving the quality of citizens' lives through targeted programs based on strategic data collected on current statistics. In our third and final segment exploring the diversification thrust, the Honorable Dr. Bohindradat Tiwari, charged with the responsibility of this under his ministry, will explain how various sectors will play their role in achieving holistic development. Strategic targets stipulated in the diversification thrust focuses on the provision of a holistic, meaningful lifestyle for all citizens. 
from the reduction of poverty to curbing crime to ensuring proper health care and education opportunities are made available to all. Planning and Development Minister Dr. Botiwari says new and more focused programs will see the specifics achieved and propel the economy's growth to global standards. Minister Tiwari says through these strategies, all citizens will be better positioned to benefit from this type of long-term sustainable development. The whole idea is to, to be a, have a very inclusive economy that is growing in which everybody can participate and everybody prospers at a certain level in the society so that they can feel the benefits of the economic development. He adds that these targets can only be reached by focusing on the human development aspect which involves a tertiary education drive. According to the latest stats published by the Central Statistical Office, there has been a significant rise in tertiary education among citizens in 2010, which has been due to the provision of ramped-up education opportunities. Minister Tiwari says it's about ensuring employment in critical sectors see emerging graduates. We are expanding tertiary education. We want to achieve 60% here in Trinidad and Tobago, and we have to diversify the economy and lift it higher in the knowledge realm in order to absorb uh, all of these graduates. Another sector critical to the improvement of life is food production. We are trying to diversify the kind of production systems. So you have large estates of 50 acres, 100 acres, but you, have to, you also have smaller ones and you have cooperative things like they are doing with the farmers uh, um, in South Trinidad, the former cane farmers, to try to facilitate cooperative development in some of those areas in terms of food security. As Minister Tiwari points out, all of these initiatives are intertwined with each other. He notes that transforming the health sector will see the expansion and improvement in the standards of care provided to citizens. All of these plans are interconnected and of course you need the public-private sector partnerships and the focus that the Minister of Finance has brought to that is to look at the kinds of road systems that we need to create and what are the priorities, uh, to look at health and hospitals because that is a major part of it. We have plans for Point Fourteen, we have for Rima, for San Fernando, uh, we have for specialized centers taking the bar up, so to speak, in terms of health sector development and management. So those are some of the things that we are focused on right now in terms of development and a lot of those projects are ready to go. The other thing is to take the medical capability of the country higher by investing in more specialized services in Trinidad and Tobago. And that can be done in two ways. One with the government itself investing in its hospitals and building the capacity or building new hospitals. But it can also be done by public-private partnerships in which you make arrangements with expert facilities in other areas. And the third thing is by way of investment in which you link your health strategy to, um, to health tourism and related areas. But how will these measures make an impact on issues that affect citizens' lives, such as crime and poverty? Part of that involves national security and reducing crime and dealing with the gangs, dealing with the gang leaders and basically police and military intervention. But a lot of it also has to do with development of places like East Port of Spain. There are 19 communities there in that East Port of Spain area. And there are all kinds of interventions that we are involved in, not just from East Port of Spain development, but for instance, we are talking with uh, one uh, trade union leader as well as uh, the Archbishop of Port of Spain. We're talking about a, a technical vocational facility that we might be able to work together on. It is owned by the Catholic Church. And we're trying to see how we can bring that into the system. All these point to a high development and performance in each sector with a capacity to put Trinidad and Tobago on developed nation status. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Up next in football, some positive signs after losing 2-0 to Peru. Stay with us.
The Ministry of Sport along with the Ministry of Tourism have partnered with the Trinidad and Tobago Football Federation as the senior men's national football team kick off its preparation for the CONCACAF Gold Cup in July. The Soka Warriors faced Peru in friendly international on Wednesday night at the Atta Bolton Stadium. And despite going down 2-0, there were some positive signs. Wayne Cunningham has the highlights from that encounter. Football fans came out in their numbers as Trinidad and Tobago met Peru in a friendly at a well-prepared Atta Bolton Stadium. This was the first major warm-up match for the Soka Warriors ahead of the CONCACAF Gold Cup in July, while the South Americans are preparing for the final stage of World Cup qualification. For the first time in their brief tenure at the helm, head coaches Hudson Charles and Jamal Shabazz had the services of a number of our foreign-based professionals at their disposal, with Kenwin Jones, Carlos Edwards, Kaleem Highland, Carly Mitchell, Darren Roberts and Sheldon Batu all in the starting lineup. And it was Jones with the first real sight of goal as the Warriors started positively, but he fails to find his feet after good work from midfield maestro at Tula Guerra. Piro also had their big names available and it was their captain Claudio Pizarro who campaigns in Germany with Bayern Munich pouncing on the rebound to open the scoring in the 29th minute. Paulo Cruzeiro was aiming to make it too, but Warriors goalkeeper Marvin Phillip made a fine fingertip save to deny him. Phillip became a busy man between the uprights as Peru got their game going late in the first half as Carlos Zambrano tries his luck. Trinidad and Tobago regained their composure and almost conjured up an equaliser as the half wind down, but Kaleem Highland's effort was well saved by Royal Omar Fernandez. Kevon Carter and Guerra forced the keeper into some desperate saves as the Warriors started the second half brightly. Highland losing his footing after the knockdown from Jones as TNT pressed for parity. The Peruvians were sensing danger and took strong measures to repel TNT, Sheldon Bato feeling the hurt. Jones tried to sneak in the resulting free kick, but the keeper got down well. TNT's best player on the night was easily Atula Guerra of Caledonia AIA, but he also got his chance to bury one and was denied. Instead, it would be the visitors who would strike. Cruzado, who plays for Chivo in Italy, making it 2-0 Peru. With three minutes to go, TNT did not give up. But despite a creditable performance, there would be no comeback for the Warriors in this match as Peru secured the 2-0 win. Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. When we return our All for Carnival segment, stay with us. Time now for our All for Carnival segment. Aruka recently launched its regional carnival and Minister of the Arts and Multiculturalism, Dr. The Honorable Lincoln Douglas was there to take part in the festivities. There was a large turnout at the launch of Aruka Carnival, which makes it one of the more promising regions for Carnival 2013. There was a variety of entertainment and for many, it was a time to kick back, relax and have a good time. Most notable was Minister of the Arts and Multiculturalism and Member of Parliament for Lupino Bonnet West, the Honourable Lincoln Douglas. The Minister showed that he had no problem entertaining the crowd, all in the name of good fun. Now I will tell you something, I want you all to make some noise to one of the most hard working ministers. Somebody say yeah, yeah! yeah, yeah. But I will tell you what, you see carnival time is one of the very few times in this country where we put aside all our differences and have no political differences and have no racial differences and have nothing like that because at carnival time, 
everybody parties as one. And right now, if you're proud to be from Trinidad and Tobago, show my face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, watch me, do them so. Go red, white, and black. If you're proud, red, white, and black. All the hands, red, white, and black. In the back, red, white, and black. Say red, white, and black. Red, white, and black. I'm gonna start you. I'm gonna help you out. Hear me. I party in it. I dress in a female red. Tell him, I don't care what nobody see. Every gun is a little dead. Plus, I know what I see, son. Them say, I'm out of class. Where you from? I'm from Trinidad. If you know that Aruka is the sweetest place in the world, put your hand in the air, put your plug in the air, let me go. Cause they love our Trinidad. Our national instrument was even on display at the event as many jammed to its sweet song. There were numerous artists who got the crowd moving. Even Super Blue took to the stage and sung some of his older tunes. Aruka is going to represent. You're going to represent. You ready? Whatever song play, you have to represent. Whatever song play, you have to represent. It was truly a memorable Sunday evening for the residents who are now looking forward to the Carnival main event in the area. And our All for Carnival feature brings us to the end of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching.